Joining me now to break it all down is Chris Katowski, Managing Director and Senior Research Analyst at Oppenheimer. Chris, good evening. Thanks for being with us. So, I mean, let me ask an overbroad question first. Um, the KRE Regional Bank ETF is, uh, is still way down. Are the regional banks going to be okay? Should people be buying it here? Well, yeah, I mean, the one I track more is the BKX, and that's down 24% since uh, since March uh, 9th. So that's been quite quite a move. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I do think Silicon Valley was an outlier, but there is nobody in that category. Uh, you know, if you, if you look at it, you know, roughly 60% of their uh, earning assets were securities, of more than half of the industry. And, you know, you could already see as, as recent as early as the third quarter, you could see that they were an outlier because starting in the third quarter, their deposits started repricing faster or, than, than their assets did. And again, in the fourth quarter, whereas the rest of the industry was different. So, you know, I understand why people are block booking these things. But, you know, there's a there's a huge difference, a, a degree of difference between Silicon Valley's makeup and and the uh, uh, you know typical regional bank. Okay, that being yeah, said, though, you can see why people get get rattled. Yeah, well, what about the follow-on effects here? If after uh, Silicon Valley Bank, Credit Suisse, Signature, some others, banks are less inclined to lend out, and they've got to uh, you know the, give their depositors more back anyway. I mean, do, do net interest margins come in so far? that eventually these stocks would get taken down anyway? No, I don't think it's that kind of thing. If you look at the industry broadly, their so-called held to maturity uh, securities portfolio, which, which is you know, what the primary issue is, is roughly equal to their long-term capital and long-term debt put together. That's for the industry broadly. It's, it's about 89%, I did the numbers. For Silicon Valley, it was four times. So, you know, for the most part, these banks, they have some long-term assets, you know, in these held to maturity securities. They probably wish they had a bunch less of them. But on the other hand, it, it's kind of paired against a long-term asset. Mm -hmm. So you're still going to, for the most part, on, on, on the banks have uh, a relatively short maturity uh, deposit life and a relatively short maturity loan book. And, you know, for most of the regional banks, I'm sure there will be a period of adjustment. There may be a couple of bumps along the way. But, but you know, you, you give all this a year or two times to, and they, you, can, you can work through the problem. So is that, prob is that issue, that problem then, priced in here, given what you said, the, the you know, index that you watch is down 24 percent since beginning of March? Yeah, well, one thing I've learned is that even if that is true, it doesn't mean it can't be more priced than <laughs> right. before. It was back right. Now. And 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 the answer is I do think it's 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 more than priced in. Though you know, I won't vouch for how the stocks will trade for the next uh, month or so. You know, I mean, the you know we're going to get some data. We're going to see. Uh, you know, on, on Thursday, we're going to see how much the banks are into this uh, facility, special facility that the Fed put up. On Friday, we're going to get to see actual, um, you know, deposit numbers for, for the banks and then the so-called H8 data that comes out every Friday at 415. So we'll get little data points along the way, uh, but probably not really major data points until the banks uh, report in mid-March. You know, so I could easily see volatility you know, up through March. You know, that said, two years from now, are, are most of these companies going to be fine? Uh, you know, and the bigger ones, I think absolutely. So I've been trying to collect intelligence from uh, CEOs I know who, who are close to this. So today, talk to Max Levchin, Max Levchin at a firm who, who's saying that, yes, he is being more cautious about who, on the consumer side, they lend money out to. Talk to Rene Lassert uh, at Bill, and he said, yes, lenders are, they want more data on, on these small businesses before offering lines of credit. So given that dynamic, what are you hearing or seeing about the degree to which these financial institutions are going to be restrictive in offering out credit? I think if you talk to most of the big banks, which is what I cover primarily, 
they will all have a mantra that says, we, uh, our credit box is a through the cycle credit box. We don't want to tighten it whenever there's a concern and loosen it whenever people are feeling good, that they want to underwrite for the cycle. And you hope that's right. And that should minimize those kinds of, um, you know, you, you don't want that kind of dial up, dial down, you know, herky jerky kind of credit standards in the economy. I, I think the Fed doesn't want that. The banks don't want it. So, you know, hopefully, hmm. hopefully uh, there's a minimum of that going on, certainly among the big banks. You know, that said, bankers are human, too. And, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> when when you see this kind of uh, when you see this kind of tumult, it's only natural to uh, to 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 be extra cautious. And so I, I, I can easily see that. But but for the most part, they're going to try to. Uh, similar credit standards or similar kind of loans. Well,